guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I'm always in the market for finding the top talent, the top 1%, doing innovative things, changing the world, one client at a time. So today I have Marie, and she's going to talk about business strategies to modernize your firm, 10x your business plan, sales, clients, and she's got a fantastic story to share, and I'm happy to welcome her to the stage. So Marie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Dr. Lou. How are you? Yeah, good. Uh, you know, we had connected through Podmatch. The audience doesn't yes. use, so tell people your origin story and what you yeah. do. Yeah, absolutely. Marie Tarosian, I am, uh, let's see, I came to the U.S. from uh, Lebanon. That's where I'm born and raised. Uh, I'm of Armenian origin, uh, so that's another story. But uh, if anybody knows about the Armenians, uh, you know, if you had friends, you would know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> so um, so I, I, I started, uh, I'm a CPA, so I started my career as a, a financial auditor uh, working for a local CPA firm here in Miami, Florida. 20... 17 i i made the, the initial attempt i would say to kind of go off on my own and and try to do my own thing and then i got so scared uh and i went back to a full-time job and as soon as i did that i realized oh no no i should not have done that um but you know i stuck around i i finished uh, another year and then uh when my second child was born i decided you know what it's either all in or all out kind of thing, you know, I'm just giving it my all, I'm going to push through and here I am, you know, uh, since 2018, still surviving um, and learning every day and uh, growing every day. Um, so I started with the, my CPA firm first, and then uh, recently I launched my coaching business. So that's where I'm at now. Yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, um, burn your boat. So you have no option <laughs> but to actually... <laughs> Um, to actually, you know, succeed and you have, uh, you know, like I said, entrepreneurship is actually a journey of self-development and self-improvement and kind of um, making it on your own, which mm -hmm. you know, you're, I'm sure you're familiar. You have a very interesting background because you're a CPA, but then you, you know, you're not your own business focusing more on coaching now. Yes. So, yeah. So we'll talk about basically first thing is your firm. You talk about strategies to modernize your form, your firm. So yes. talk more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So when I started my firm, you know, I, I'm I was like a typical, in a sense, you know, a typical accountant, a CPA that is really focused on the numbers. When I was auditing, I audited I audited other people's businesses and it was interesting to a certain point, not that interesting. But then I went to corporate accounting and I really enjoyed being a corporate accountant, worked my way up to be a CFO. Um, so during that whole time, I never got to learn how to really market myself or market the work that I do. Um, cause you know, I, I, they, the people that hired me knew what I was doing. So, <laughs> so it's a very different animal when you're out there as an entrepreneur and trying to bring, bring in clients and you have no idea how to, how to market yourself. So, and then the other thing I didn't know was how to sell. Like one thing is you can market. It's another thing to sell and close on deals, right? Clients. So when I talk about how to, you know, how to modernize your firm, and even though I'm talking to other CPS similar to me, it applies to, you know, doctors, lawyers, all of us that are in the service space, and we are very technical, we know what the heck we're doing in that area of expertise, but then anything outside of, you know, that we're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> But some of us have a little bit of, you know, personality and we're able to learn and then kind of develop those skills a little bit more than others. But so when I talk about modernizing your firm, that's my that one of the talks that I do. And I focus on based on my experience, how to create a more of a modern CPA firm, how to 
how to be in the face in the marketplace, always, you know, using social media, podcasting, different avenues of marketing the business, however small it is right now compared to massive CPA firms. But, uh, you know, you got to start someplace. And then the second thing I focus on is how to create multiple flows of income within your firm. And then the third thing I focus on is why coach a coach or a mentor is super important. So you can go through this entrepreneurial journey with a, a person that's guiding you. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And it's all about, basically, it's modernizing your mindset. And you touched on yeah. it, social media. <laughs> that's, you know, that's almost your social media. You can be basically your own Bloomberg now, you know, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> just like, you know, podcasts, you know, you, it's your own radio now. So, yeah. So, you know, one thing is, um, I love this idea how you, you, you know, we were talking backstage and we're talking about basically increasing the value of your firm. So you talk about increasing the value of your business. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start from, we'll do that. How do you, how do you increase the value of your business from your standpoint? Yeah, sure. Um, and I love that you br brought that up and that's one of my core services that I'm trying to launch on the CPA side. And that's um, what I do is for me, it's very important I, that a, a company is established, not just like only sales wise, or they're focusing on sales, but they're also focusing on their structure of their business and how that actually translates when you want to sell your business, what does that mean? Um, so for example, I use a, a software uh, that gives us a good business estimate, value estimate, right? So it's not a certified valuation, but it's it gives you a good estimate of where your business is compared to the industry. So within that, there's like real core questions, right? So recurring revenue, they're asking a uh, key, key stakeholder or the person that's in charge of selling or, or, you know, the owner. So how much of that is reliable on, you know, the business on that one person, right? Um, and then there's other key metrics that they're asking for as the software is giving you a value. So what I've what I've created is that be, between the audit work that I did and as a CFO, what I was working on and now using that software, I put it all together in a systematic way of helping business owners say, OK, let's start with a value, an estimate. Let's see where you stand compared to the industry. The estimate gives four valuations and 13 KPIs, financial KPIs. And then from there, we can dig into like, OK, now let's look at how the how accurate the financials are. Let's build a, a long, let's say three to five year strategic plan with a forecast. And then now let's start measuring this. Like how are we performing to the to the forecast? And then let's reevaluate. So over time, um, the business will start growing in value. Within this, I would also implement a lot of policies and procedures that business owners, even if they are like two million, three million, if they got there fast, they still haven't set their policies and procedures and everything's going to fall apart if there is no procedures to follow. Everybody's doing their own thing. So I've kind of like uh, converged all of the different pieces that I've done, like at different times of my life to this one full product uh, called Valuation MT. And that's how I help people grow the value of their business. Mm, yeah, I love that. And then the next thing I have is um, talking about, so you're talking about, and then one thing is the clients. So why is client relationship management vital for your business? And mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you scale it? Because initially it's going to be like you managing, yeah. and how do you scale it so it can, you know, tell tell us more? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's one of the key things that I realized I didn't know about either, like client relationship management. I mean, I build relationships. I'm a very social person, but that is one thing. And the client relationship management is a different thing. So what what I realized is that to be able to gather all the, the notes, the prospects, you know, the conversations, like you really need some place to put them, right? Like you can use Excel, of course, but that's going to be very cumbersome if your list gets bigger. Um, so, you know, a CRM system is, is a great way to kind of not only keep all the conversations in one place, but then also your continuous marketing, your email marketing, the campaigns and newsletters, all the other marketing stuff that are going to go through it to build that list. You need the CRM system. 
Um, so that's something I started using early on because I realized I can't keep up with these notes, writing names everywhere. And then if I was to remember what I was talking to them, it's like scrolling to like like pages and pages. I'm like, where was this conversation happening? So it's kind of like you just learn on the go because no one has taught you these things. Um, and that's another uh, thing I teach other CPAs because uh, I, I've, I've noticed they don't do that. They don't even follow up. Let's put it that way. They won't follow up with a prospect that could have been a, a really great prospect. <laughs> they just don't follow up. So that's a whole different thing. So when you want to scale and you're adding more team members, that's another thing that I've noticed where I was working in the past. Let's say adding a truly business development individuals was not their priority, apparently. And when we were wondering why, you know, we're not uh, renewing members, we're not doing this, like, you yeah, know, well, now that I'm from the outside, I'm like, man, we didn't have any business development people. There was one person. One person has to carry the weight of, I don't know how many million dollars. I'm like, doesn't make sense. So the best way is like when you have a CRM system and then you're, you're bringing on different team members, then you can assign, let's say, a group of individuals, let's say prospects or clients that that person is going to manage and handle and keep growing the list. So the best way to grow fast and scale is to have more than one of you <laughs> talking to prospects. How to value then basically building out a scaling a team mm -hmm. and then... Um... What about automation? What about software? Tell us more about that. The automation. So one of the CRMs that I use, and I know it can, you know, by the way, the whole marketing web in the back can get super technical and complicated. And I have someone working on that. Literally the other day I was telling my marketing uh, uh, intern, I said, I am so glad you are doing this. I tried this by myself like five years ago and I gave up doing all the technical web in the back end. But there, there are some other softwares that have an automation system within them, and it's, it's, it's fine. It's great for, for a time being. The automations help, let's say, communicate to prospects on a, not just automated way, but like it's faster, right? Like you, there's only so much you can do to remember, oh, I have to send a newsletter. I was there. I would be like, oh, my God, it's beginning of the month. I haven't even created my newsletter yet. It's like, you know, you want to be able to like, you know, implement all these things kind of in, in early on and automate them as people are signing up or, or getting on your list. They receive their first newsletter. They may be in the welcome email and then like, oh, the whole list goes on. So you can't personally do it one-on-one, -on -one, like when your list is getting bigger and you have to nurture that list over time. It's impossible. Uh, some CRM systems with automation, marketing automation like that, you can preset a lot of emails and let it go. I have a full 365 day follow up uh, email system in my CRM system so that I never have to forget to do a touch point with someone over at least 365 days yeah. for one year. <laughs> so, you know, as we come to the like the end of this, which is really interesting, you talk about a lot of ways of increasing the value, automating client relationship, modernizing. Um, what is it? Uh, you know, kind of you want the audience, the final take home message and how can they contact you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My biggest recommendation and not because I am doing coaching, but it is truly <laughs> it was life changing for me when uh, when I had a billionaire coach, you know, coaching me and that hence why I'm 10x certified. I'm a Grand Cardone licensee. So when I started really learning these billionaire strategies and it changed my mindset and it changed the way I look at things. And when the when the hard times kick in and you don't have anyone picking you up, you are going to give up. So having a coach is super important. And even now, you know, as I'm doing my coaching to others, I'm still getting coached every week so that I can stay on top of my game. I have to train. I have to be ready for my clients. So I would say but the biggest takeaway for, for everyone is that get yourself a coach. And I would love I would love that, to have the honor of coaching you. Um, and the best way to, to reach out is uh, I can, you know, 788. That's my phone number. Um, and they can also go to my website, uh, www. Yeah. And for all the audience out there, um, Marie's resources will be in the links and show notes. And uh, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. And thanks for um, dropping so much experience and wisdom. Thank you, Dr. Lee. I appreciate you. <laughs>
really enjoyed that wonderful, inspirational, motivational piece. Again, if you, wherever you are listening, if you liked it, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. We're on everywhere, Spotify, iTunes, Google, Amazon, Audible. And without much ado, be sure to thank this show's sponsors, and we'll see you next week.